Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the Empower Africa pitch event, Leading Entrepreneurs in Africa featuring Botswana. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Shai Bernstein. I'm VP of Biz Development and Partnerships at Empower Africa. Um, and I'd like to thank all our honored speakers and the teams from BITC and BIH who worked with us on putting all this event together. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Empower Africa is a business community with a mission to drive investment, trade, and job creation in Africa. We believe in trade over aid and that business is the best way to build things and make a difference. We have three verticals in the company. The first is the Empower Africa Business Network. The second are events and trade missions. And the third, the consulting and project facilitation. Um, the business community that we're talking about brings together all the relevant stakeholders who are doing business in Africa. We have the SMEs and the startups. We have the investors, banks, PEs, VCs, family offices. We have the government officials and organizations, multinational enterprises, and so on, all in one place. We believe in bringing good people together and in the power of synergy. Um, I'd like to show you, before we um, uh, continue with the uh, program, a quick video, a 40-second video, that demonstrates um, our virtual uh, platform that you guys are on right now. Um, and so just bear with me one second. Here we go. Thank you very much. So as you can see, this is the virtual networking platform of Empower Africa. Um, again, even through COVID um, and even once COVID is hopefully uh, uh, behind us, still there is such a big need and so much potential for the virtual networking space um, and, and uh, um, do so much business together even without uh, meeting in person yet. Um, so just before I continue and present uh, uh, the first welcoming remarks, um, uh, by uh, our CEO and founder of Empower Africa, Ezi Rappaport. I just want to give a quick rundown on how the event is going um, uh, is gonna, is, is gonna to go down. So we have here um, some of the top entrepreneurs in Botswana, which we want to highlight, and um, other investors who came to see, learn, ask questions, um, uh, and see how they can help invest and, uh, uh, and help expand the business. There will be three pitches, one after the other, okay? So please take notes and write down any questions that you might have. You're also welcome to write it in the chat box that you'll see on the bottom bar, just on the bottom of your screen, um, or on your right, depending on where you put it, that you can just quick, um, you know, type in questions. Um, after the first batch of the three pitches, we're going to have time for Q&A if there are any questions and, answer, questions and answers between the companies and other people who are interested. And then, of course, moving on to the next batch, okay, of the next three, all right? Um, after that, we will have more networking uh, time for people to just, you know, schmooze, get to know each other and meet wonderful people and uh, potential business partners. And of course, we'll have closing remarks by the CEO of BITC. Stay tuned for that in a moment. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce you to the CEO and founder of Empower Africa, Mr. Ezi Rappaport. Good morning, everybody from New York City. And uh, welcome to the Empower Africa event that's uh, in coordination uh, with the BITC and BIH. We are so proud to be having our third event to promote investment, trade, and job creation in uh, Botswana. And uh, I want to thank Kitso and Caleb, who's been working for us uh, the past couple of years. And a special thank you to Kels and Julius from the BITC for really starting this relationship and driving the consistency. And this is our third event together. And I'm so proud to be working with Botswana and working with such great organizations in Botswana. You know, Botswana is such an amazing country, one of the most well-governed countries, not just in Africa, but the world. 
and it is a symbolic example of how governments utilize their natural resources to invest in the true assets of their country, the true diamonds of their country, and that is the people. And I've been to Botswana twice in the past, always such amazing experience. Um, and I very much look forward to hearing from the entrepreneurs and seeing entrepreneurs grow and succeed and really take a lead, not just in Botswana, but around the world. And we at Empower Africa are committed to getting more attention on Africa, more attention on Botswana. And I really am excited to see what the future um, holds for Botswana and holds for our amazing relationship. So God bless everybody, wishing the entrepreneurs much success. I hope the investors are very impressed and inspired and there's great investment and great outcome from the events. Thank you again, everybody. God bless and have a beautiful, productive event. Thank you so much, Ezzy. Um, moving on to now introduce, it's my honor and pleasure to invite our co MC for today's event, who's also a dear friend, the Director of Export Development and Promotion at BITC, Mr. Dipope uh, sorry, Dipopego Julius Checo. I always call him Julius. My apologies. Julius, please join us at the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Chai. And uh, thank you, AZ, for those uh, sweet with uh, whilst welcoming us. My aim is just to introduce the, the speakers without uh, wasting any time. I'm gonna introduce Ms. Tranglina Rabuntone, who is the Executive Director for Export Development and Promotion at uh, Bozana Investment and Trade Center. Uh, Export Development and Promotion is one of the core business functions within BITC that is uh, basically you know, tasked with uh, developing potential exporters and actually taking them to, to the international markets. So she is in charge of that and uh, she is my, uh, my boss, she is my, my, my supervisor. And then we also have Dr. Uh, Buzanani Tacheba, who is a director uh, at Botswana Innovation, Botswana Innovation Hub. Uh, and he will also go. He's also coming to 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 tell us about BIH or Botswana Innovation Hub. So, without wasting any time, I would like to ask Ms. Tranglina Rabunpunu to get on stage and uh, tell us about business opportunities in Botswana. Not to tell us, in fact, to tell our guests uh, from Israel and the rest of the world about business opportunities here. You know what they can expect in this country. Uh, Ms. Rabunpunu, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, um, Director of Ceremonies. Um, let me take this time just to uh, thank our and appreciate our chief executive officer, Re Ulibile, who is with us uh, this afternoon. And also, I would like to appreciate our CEO, uh, Mr. Uh, Reginald Stelelo, who is also here with us uh, this afternoon. And also, just to appreciate um, Mr. Ezra Papot, uh, the CEO of Empower Africa. Uh, for those nice ways, and we really appreciate the collaboration that we continue to have uh, with yourselves uh, within Power Africa. And also, let me just appreciate the, the Director of Innovation uh, and Development, uh, Dr. Tacheba. Um, mine is just a brief one. I will have to give a, a brief overview of, of Botswana. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not able to, to share the screen with me, with you, with you here, but I had prepared a PowerPoint uh, presentation. I hope I'll be able uh, to do that, but it looks like it's failing me now. Um, I'll just uh, take you through uh, our presentation, uh, just to give a brief outline of what Botswana offers. Um, just as key highlights, as a country, we are, situated right uh, in the center of the south southern africa uh next to namibia next to zimbabwe and next to zimbabwe and next to south africa we are centrally located our country is about uh, 582,000 square kilometers and we have a population of about uh, 2.3 uh, million 
So the key exports from Botswana are mainly uh, the diamond, as you will see from the other slides that I'm going to present to yourself. That is the main commodity that we are currently exporting into the Israel market. And I just want to highlight that in terms of our, our gross uh, domestic product, we uh, have about uh, 8.37 billion. Uh, and per capita income for, for us as, as a country, we are sitting at around uh, 7.9, uh, 7,900 um, USD, which really shows that as a country, we do have a high purchasing power. So uh, that shows, but in terms of imports, as, as a country, we are importing a lot of products uh, uh, from, from, from across the globe. Uh, as previously indicated, we are really centered around the, the South Central of Southern Africa. So we are a gateway uh, to the rest of Africa. And Botswana is, the, is, is, is devised uh, a strategy to link into the priority sectors that are uh, linked with the regional value chain. Uh, as a country, we've signed uh, bilateral and multilateral trade agreements really to support our export vehicle. Uh, we do have a uh, trade uh, relations of we've signed preferential trade uh, market access uh, with SADC. We also have duty uh, uh, free and quota free market access to about 61 million within the SACU region. We are also a signatory of SACU EFTA, uh, and also we also have access to the Agoa market. And we've also signed some other bilateral trade agreements uh, with Zimbabwe, and also of recent, the latest one as the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So Botswana has really developed uh, uh, those uh, trade relationships. I wish I could be showing you some slides, but just to highlight that in terms of our exports, as, as a country, it's, it's showing that uh, in terms of Botswana export uh, into Israel, it's mainly in the diamond industry. And we are sitting at around uh, 374,000 uh, US dollar uh, in thousand pillars. But in terms of imports from, you, uh, from Israel to Botswana, is at around uh, 18,000 or so. So you can see that there's really a a great uh, trade uh, deficit when you sit there. That the figure that I just highlighted is relating to the 2019 statistics. As a country, we also have a number of products that we are currently exporting, uh, but I wouldn't go into details, but because I only have 10 minutes just to highlight uh, the key investment climate and also uh, what are the opportunities that exist uh, within the country. Just as a highlight to say, what are the climatic conditions for people to consider investing in Botswana? As a country, we do have a highest uh, sovereign credit ratings. We are rated by Moody uh, as standard at, at, A3, uh, uh, at A3. So this is a really a high credit ratings. And also we are the second least corrupt country in Africa. So it just to show that uh, we've got prudent uh, macroeconomic management. We also do have a strong balance sheet uh, as a, as a country. Uh, so we've managed to have sustained uh, periods of economic growth uh, of about uh, uh, 3% in 2019, and we believe uh, they will increase uh, eventually. Just to drill down uh, into investment opportunities, our opportunities exist across uh, different sectors. We do have opportunities uh, in the horticulture sector. As a country currently, we are importing mainly from South Africa to the tune of 29.9 million. So we believe Israel has got a huge uh, uh, capacity or they have got the huge knowledge in terms of uh, the agri sector. So we really want to welcome uh, the Israel uh, investors to consider investing in Botswana, particularly with in, in the area of, of, uh, of agriculture. We also as a country are currently importing a lot of milk uh, from the our neighboring countries. So it's also an opportunity to consider doing daily, daily production in the country. Other opportunities that exist is in terms of uh, chemical fertilizer production or animal feeds and also upper culture production. We've actually done a study that was really mapping opportunities that exist uh, within different parts of the country. So there are a number of opportunities that uh, exist within the country. One, I, I, just as, as a continuation, you do have companies that are currently into the automotive uh, components and general manufacturing. And I must highlight that uh, it's one of those uh, uh, investment opportunities that we want the Israelites also to consider investing in. 
We also currently are exporting our soda as a whole, but uh, we believe uh, we need to be doing a uh, value addition to this uh, uh, soda ash. We do also have abundance of coal uh, resources, so it's one of those opportunities. In terms of the diamond sector, we are currently exporting our, our diamonds uh, in a raw form. Yes, we do have some companies that are doing cutting and polishing, but we know that Israel is well known as experts in the diamond industry. So it's one sector that we believe uh, could, uh, the Israel investors could take advantage of. I've also previously mentioned that as a country, we do have uh, a lot of uh, beef that we are currently exporting into uh, Europe, uh, Europe market. So it's one of those because with beef comes in leather. So the value chain of leather production is one of the opportunities uh, that we believe we could take advantage of. In the energy space, as a country, we do have a lot of sunlight. So uh, solar is one of those opportunities that exist. So we would urge and encourage our investors to take advantage of, of, of those. The tourism industry, uh, as you may be aware, we do have opportunities in terms of a hotel and lodges, our tented caps, our how the way we've positioned ourselves as a country, we've positioned ourselves as a high, high value, a uh, low volume uh, type of tourism. So we do have a lot of uh, well-renowned people or uh, celebrities coming to Botswana just to relax and enjoy the ambience that the country has to offer. So those are the kind of opportunities uh, that exist uh, within Botswana. ICT, financial services, and also BPO, those are the services uh, that we we want to project uh, to the Israel companies to consider uh, doing business here. Uh, also, as a country, we are positioning ourselves as a, an international service center. So we are positioning Botswana as a regional gateway uh, for the financial and capital flows into the Sarek region. So some opportunities that exist, uh, investors can uh, set up a variety of structures under the IFSC uh, to service our regional market. And those, were, those includes uh, uh, African private equity fund, uh, insurance, reinsurance activities, or you can head, have head office uh, support structures in Botswana and also do the regional banking groups and, or, or BPO and call center. So those are some cross-sectional activities that uh, investors uh, could consider investing in. But just also as a highlight to say, we do have a competitive uh, tax framework and currently, we do have about uh, 54 companies that have been certified under the IFSC uh, model. So those are the kind of opportunities that exist. In terms of incentives, I must highlight that we have a duty-free import of manufacturing of agricultural agriculture and machinery equipment into Botswana. Uh, but as I've already mentioned, in terms of IFSC, just to highlight that we don't have exchange controls as a country. And also the tax, if you are registered and, uh, under IFSC, it's up to 15% uh, tax credit uh, and also uh, zero rated for, for VAT. We also, uh, in terms of the general tax, it's 15% for, for manufacturing and also uh, 5 to 10% if you are in the SPEDU region. There is a region that we call SPEDU, uh, which is in the eastern part of the country. So also if you want to come and establish in the special economic zone, you will benefit from such uh, tax uh, incentives. Our Tax rate maximum in personal income is at 25%. And also there's a possibility of a tax holiday to a period of about uh, uh, 10% uh, for, for a period of 10 years. But generally speaking, as a country, we believe uh, that we are offering a good incentive in terms of the tax. Because if you look at Africa, it's ranging at about an average of 27.5%. Uh, uh, but as Botswana, the general tax is around 22%. Uh, so the global average is ranging around 23.5 cents. So we believe uh, there is that uh, great opportunity in terms of tax uh, in Botswana. Um, in terms of the training cost, companies are allowed to get a two, up to 200% uh, uh, tax rebate. We do as a country also have taken or have gone into double taxation avoidance agreements with a number of countries like your France, your India, your Mauritius, uh, Swaziland, Mozambique, Namibia, uh, Seychelles and a number of those countries. And we do have others that are still not yet enforced, but uh, they're on the way. Um, 
I think I've mentioned in terms of the, the incentive that FEDU offers and also in terms of the services or the opportunities that exist uh, within uh, the FEDU region. But just as in bringing my presentation to a close, because I believe we, this is just an introduction and we'll continue to engage uh, with the investors in Israel. Just to say SBITC, we offer a one-stop savings center and our main one, we assist companies or we hand hold them through all government processes, be it registering company, getting necessary licenses, uh, getting industrial land or factory shells uh, to operate. And also even in terms of opening a bank account, we do assist that getting utility uh, connections and all that. So SBITC, we are the first point of contact uh, when it comes to uh, servicing the investors. So I'm encouraging uh, the Israel investors here to say, we are here to assist and handhold you uh, in terms of assisting or establishing your business in the plan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director of Ceremonies. I think I've managed to, to cover those. Uh, you are not able to see my presentation has really covered uh, most of the key issues that I had wanted to touch on. Thank you. Without much ado, I would like to kindly request Dr. Tacheva to please get on, get on stage and uh, tell us about the Innovation Hub. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dumela. Shalom. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, for the introduction and i'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, bitc um, for acknowledging us and for giving us this opportunity to uh, uh to pitch uh on this very platform um i've got a brief presentation that i'd like to share uh and hopefully you can see it now um so um, I thought I'd quickly go through um, the Botswana Innovation Hub uh, for the appreciation of those that are not familiar with us. Uh, my quick focus is, is basically to talk about uh, technology-oriented um, foreign direct investment. And I'm talking about investment both on the startup side of things, but also uh, in terms of those entities that are looking to uh, position themselves in Botswana. I think first things first, uh, Botswana Innovation Hub, uh, what do we do? Um, we consider ourselves as an ideal location for technology-driven and knowledge-intensive businesses uh, that wish to establish themselves and develop uh, and compete um, in the regional and the global markets. Uh, we are a proud member of the International Association of Science Parks and Areas of Innovation, uh, a platform that allows us to be able to leverage on other efforts in terms of um, innovation. Now, quickly for you to appreciate our strategy, uh, and I'd like to draw attention here to, um, you know, our strategic leverage areas uh, to say that our, our main focus really is to, to demonstrate impact, to, to allow innovation to, to be impactful uh, from, to society. Uh, from a strategic goals perspective, I would also like to draw attention to the two uh, that are basically talking to our efforts in mobilizing venture funding for innovation and technology entrepreneurship. And at the same time, uh, leveraging on uh, the existing ecosystem and the, the startup companies that we support uh, to be able to grow and, and, and to, re to reach the levels where they can be able to register on the stock exchange. Now, what you can see here is, is basically the science and technology park. That's where BIH resides. And within the spaces that are provided, uh, this is a purpose-built facility that is intended to support uh, technology startups. Um, to be able to support innovative companies. Uh, we have specific instruments that talk to innovation funding. Uh, we support intellectual property advisory. Uh, we provide intellectual property advisory services. Uh, we work mainly with strategic partnerships where uh, and, and, and a membership-based organization. So we, we work with partnerships and, 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 and members uh, who basically sort of follow our code of conduct and also um, work with us in delivering that which is impactful to society. Uh, we have, in terms of facilities, we have co-creation laboratories uh, for developers, uh, for creatives to be able to work on specific projects. Uh, we have facilities that include gaming facilities to promote the gaming industries and solution in that space. Uh, we also support um, innovation capacity at the grassroots level, uh, looking at issues around robotics um, and, and coding skills development. Now, I just wanted to quickly reflect on um, 
the, the instant in terms of the local technology and entrepreneurship space, as well as uh, where I see us being relevant or playing a critical role uh, from now going forward. Uh, there's a talk of a global disruption that came in the context of COVID-19, uh, which I think the World Economic Forum has termed uh, the, the, great, um, the great reset. Now, I think basically what has become apparent is that there's ample opportunities um, from a technology uh, entrepreneurship perspective, but also from an investment perspective. There's opportunities to invest in new spaces and in, in new tech uh, that basically lends itself as opportunities for to drive uh, future uh, economic growth, uh, both locally, regionally, as well as in the global context. So in terms of our local uh, tech ecosystem, we, we, we realize that there's that potential um, in terms of being able to support the local enterprises that are upcoming and that are quite aggressive in that space. Uh, to be able to grow new opportunities. Now, I just wanted to quickly reflect on Israel and our aspiration and our anticipation of, um, you know, great things that we can learn about it. Um, I think uh, you're mostly familiar with the fact that we all uh, look at Israel as what has been termed as a startup uh, nation. But I think of lately, uh, there's more talk about going from a startup nation uh, to a scale-up nation. And I think on the onset, I'd like to realize that I think, um, you know, Israel used to be associated with uh, this uh, exit culture where the whole idea was that uh, you've got brilliant minds where, you know, they're very good at coming up with innovative solutions uh, with the pure idea that um, as soon as those uh, companies or those solutions uh, gain traction, uh, they're made available for, for, for exit or for, 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 uh, for, for IPOs. And I think there are some classic examples there that I've highlighted. Uh, which have been acquired through this this platform. And, and I think it's been mentioned that uh, these are great developments in the sense that um, this this really brings a lot of much deserved in investment uh, into the Israel ecosystem. But I think the bigger question that basically remained was that, look, what does that mean then in terms of growing, uh, you know, companies, original companies that are tech oriented within the Israeli innovation ecosystem, uh, if most of your startups are basically sort of being taken out. So I think it's a great lesson for us in our ecosystem to say, uh, if we really want to go to grow world class tech enterprises, um, is there a lesson for us to be able to learn? Are we looking at um, growing or sort of developing or allowing um, uh, serial entrepreneurs to come up with innovative solutions and then have those innovations being um, taken up or being sold or being um, uh, exiting and being taken up by other entities. So we realize that uh, the, there are some commonalities and there are some similarities that allow us to be able to associate ourselves with that aspect. So the key elements here are from, from, from the, the metrics perspective, we realize that a lot of opportunities uh, uh, in terms of knowledge outputs, and I realize that um, from a from a foreign direct investment in terms of inflows, um, Israel is actually ranked number 25 from the Global Innovation Index perspective. So these are the key elements that basically sort of we realize uh, associate themselves with strength in terms of attracting investment from an innovation and tech space. Uh, likewise, from a creative outputs, um, mobile application creations, um, I think Israel is ranked first. So those are the opportunities that we are trying to relate to. Coming back to Botswana. Um, looking at the inputs and the outputs, um, you realize that we are still ranked 89. And I think that shows that we still have a long journey to go. So there's a lot of lessons that you can be able to learn from Israel. And we, we, are, we, are, we are trying to take advantage of that and see how best we can be able to leverage on that. So our ecosystem basically still needs to be able to transcend the very same um, challenges, the very same uh, uh, um, situations that Israel has been able to go through. So the biggest challenges that we have is that we've got graduate unemployment. So from a Botswana Innovation Hub perspective, through the technology entrepreneurship development, we're trying to see, change that game and really move from a skilled employed, sorry, skilled unemployed to employed uh, 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 entities. Uh, the population has got a lot to offer in terms of the demographics. We see that there's a big bulge at the bottom, and that's really where there's a lot of capacity, capacity and potential to be able to grow. So we look at that as a, as a, as a future opportunity to be able to, to grow. Now, if you look at uh, from a generation's perspective, most of the entity, most of this, the, 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 the big bulge the population is really now advanced in the sense that these are your, your generation Y and generation Z uh, kind of entities or uh, individuals. And these are looking at digital entrepreneurship as opportunities to grow. So we, we see opportunities in that space, even the local context, where we anticipate that there's opportunities for investment uh, into those companies and into those solutions going forward. 
Uh, our ecosystem is fairly uh, nascent. Uh, you can see that we, we from growing from, from ideation to commercialization, there's a number of different players. But the critical aspect that still lack is venture capital and angel funding, uh, as well as national research funding. Uh, the rest is really available. We've got new angel network, network uh, Botswana platforms uh, for venture capital. We've got you know, structures that really support and, and, and nature entrepreneurship. And this has been really a great lesson in terms of growth. Coming to startup uh, financing, uh, we realized that uh, there's still a lot uh, for us to be able to do uh, because we don't really attract a lot of invest investment in that place. Now, looking at the different financing models, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. We realized that to a large extent, all that we've been ever been able to generate in the local context is seed capital and early stage capital. When you go to early and late stage growth, there's still very little, in, including mezzanine. So we're trying to see if we can be able to trigger the, the opportunities around those areas and see investment into the entities that are locally based. Uh, as well as exploring other opportunities for, for, for funding. Now, if you look at challenges in the local context, things like market access, partnerships, IP, those are really uh, what is really um, uh, putting our startups uh, to unrest. But we've got a number of interventions from a BIH perspective in terms of acceleration platforms, innovation capacity building, mentorship, uh, pitch decks. And our idea is that if we do the right things in this context, we should be able to get them ready for investment. And I think there's been a lot of good work that has been done in that context uh, by far. So we're looking at investment where we see our entities being able to get into these other markets and be able to attract uh, investment. I did mention that really currently what is available in our local ecosystem is what you call seed or early stage funding. We've got a special instrument called innovation funding. Um, it's done so well for now. This is an old demographic or an old slide uh, showing the numbers in terms of what has been availed and what's still on the pipeline. But our view is that there's need for more advanced uh, funding, uh, which needs to come in through different models. Uh, and we're starting to see some traction in the ecosystem. Uh, already we're starting to see um, some of the local companies uh, attracting uh, you know, your first, second round funding into the investment, basically showing the level of maturity that our, our early stage or startup companies are starting to get traction, both from a local uh, a regional as well as a global investment perspective. So in the context of Israel, we see ourselves well positions, uh, positioned uh, to be able to, through our ecosystem that is still fairly nascent, but offering a lot of opportunities. Botswana is currently regarded as, as very, very highly in terms of entrepreneurship uh, support. So we see a lot of opportunities in that context and we trust and believe that um, through platforms like this, we should be able to attract the right investment uh, into the ecosystem, into the platforms like BIH, but at the same time, uh, allow some of our, our early stage companies to be able to identify opportunities um, in the regional as well as in global space. So we anticipate that where there's opportunities um, in the Israeli market, then uh, we are very much willing to be part of that uh, aspect. So I think I'll, I'll stop there, uh, hoping that I've been able to clear the sort of set the scene. And, and knowing that most of the enterprises that we have lined up today have got the, the, the capacities and they've got the, uh, the, the pitch strength to be able to put forward the ideas in a very succinct, in a very crystal manner. So we're looking forward to a very great, great session uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tacheba, for that elaborate presentation. Uh, you've really set the stage uh, for, for the main purpose of today's event, which is the, the pitch sessions for our entrepreneurs to, to sell themselves to, to, the, to the international investor community. So, Mr. Ben, ben Stein, Shai, are we ready to go on to the pitches? So, yes, indeed, we are ready. And um, we will now move on to the first batch. Um, so, uh, Julius, you could go ahead and present them. Um, and um, I'm just reminding everyone, these are pitches. They're supposed to be very, very short and concise. And so, uh, as I discussed with Julius, we're going to have three minutes for each pitch. And after that, you know, Julius will, will give, will, will give like a mark, right? And then you'll just wrap it up uh, with another 30 seconds or so if needed. Okay. Make it short, simple, concise, and uh, let's do it. All right. So we're going to do the first batch, um, Julius, and then um stop the presentation for a few minutes switch the speaker and move on you know to have the q a and so on right okay now uh the next batch or the first batch of uh presenters will be uh mr tumo kosiami of anton tech and bago lufu of nems 
and Lucia Mwabarosain coach. Uh, they will introduce themselves when they get on stage. So Mr. Tumo, Anton Tech, can you please get on stage and start with your presentation? You have uh, three to five minutes to make your pitch. Three minutes and then the last minute, one and a half minutes will be winding up your pitch. So Tumo, please get on. All right, can you hear me on your side? Yes, we can. Okay, um, good day everyone. My name is Tumo Kosi. I'm, I'm the co-founder of Anton Tech and uh, we're a technology and engineering company leveraging the power of fourth industrial revolution driving technologies like artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning, uh, machine learning, drone technology and robotics to try and address uh, problems in the agriculture space. And I'm here today asking for 500,000 pula in funding in exchange for 20% equity. So first to try and uh, uh, understand Project Anton. We present to you Project Anton. First, let's look at uh, the cases that led us to actually developing this project. So we can have a case where we have, uh, where we have, uh, especially our grandmothers, they are just used to conventional ways of just dealing with uh, weeds, pest diseases, and they have no knowledge on the transboundaries that are entering the borders. And they never know how, where to buy the treatment or how to address those particular diseases. And then in other cases, we have last year farmers in farms like Tanda Madenga who are well established. They want to do our pest disease as well, organic carbon detection uh, in a small amount of time and then get on with uh, other business of the day. They usually have busy schedules and they don't want to wait uh, for months, for weeks for experts to come and do all that for them. And then in cases where the government wants to develop new policies to try and uh, make farmers' lives easier, the government don't usually have the centralized data, the verified data to use to see the trends and to develop those policies. So we present to you Project Anton. From all these case studies, uh, we can conclude that uh, we do have these technologies here, but the conventional ways of uh, tracking the transboundary diseases, the pests, uh, the weeds and even soil organic carbon levels have lagged. And more time is actually uh, spent on trying to research on these diseases that are entering the borders and uh, the turnaround times to even get the expert advice, to even get agronomists to your farm for them to do detection and give you feedback are really high. And as I mentioned, for the government, there's a lack of their verified data bank to identify the patterns and to pick on trends and even to just help in making the data-driven decisions to help the farmers. And all these factors that I just mentioned, they end up reducing yield productivity, hence affecting the country's economy and threatening the country's uh, food security. So this is how Project Outcome works. We do uh, real-time disease detection uh, with location-based recommendation, all this using conversational AI. So farmers get uh, real-time responses uh, when sending pictures to get detection. We also offer a quick field uh, mapping and treatment spray using drone technology and uh, autonomous robotics on the field. And then uh, we, use, uh, we do visualization and analytics for the data. We centralize the data from the conversational AI standalone mobile application and even the drones and on the field robots. We centralize it and we do the analytics. And then we offer an open API tool for developers out there. We're open to co for collaboration. If another developer out there wants to develop something and uh, uh, manage with Project Anton, we do offer that. So this right here is just a quick demo of uh, how Project Anton works. So basically just a WhatsApp is the same way that you interact with someone on WhatsApp, save that number, uh, you save Project Anton's number and tap the camera icon on WhatsApp, take a picture and then you send a picture. And then you get real time response on the name of the disease and the recommendation that you can get. One update that you're adding uh, is actually uh, finding where you can buy the treatment that you're recommending. And this right here is the analytics dashboard where all that is visualized. And then, our business model, we offer uh, free disease detection uh, using WhatsApp and Telegram to farmers out there. Farmers can actually do this for free, uh, even for the mobile, for standalone mobile application, because there can be cases where farmers don't feel comfortable using WhatsApp due to, uh, they feel like their data is being controlled by WhatsApp, even though we don't capture any personal information. Uh, farmers just save their number and then they do the detection. We're looking at $101 million market here of which uh, we intend to capture 40% of the market. We also offer a subscription based on the dashboard access for uh, everyone involved in the agricultural value chain and the Freeman based API. And uh, we're, uh, we're looking at a projected revenue of uh, $2.9 million by 2024. 
We offer uh, detection, as I mentioned, by WhatsApp, Telegram, and standalone mobile application. Send a picture. That's all you need to do. Send a picture, and then you get feedback in real time. And then for drone technology, we use autonomous drones for capturing uh, the images, and then we get that we, we get those pictures, and then uh, we extract the essential information uh, uh, to detect SOC levels, even leakage in the, in the field. And then all that data that we get from conversational AI mobile apps and uh, the drones is visualized here. And uh, the government can actually use this and even researchers can use this data. And then uh, for going to market, uh, we intend to command the stroll social media because that's where our farmers are. A social media presence and then maintaining a conductive relationship with the clients, who is, uh, which is like everyone involved in the agricultural value chain. Uh, from this, and then we also, as Anton Tech, we have the skill set to develop uh, everything that we release. We'll be designing and manufacturing two drones uh, every two successive months, and then we intend to map and treat a minimum of 250 hectares a month and maintain a minimum of just five visits across the country and even across the borders. Our clients is everyone involved in the, in the agricultural value chain, from farmers, pharmaceuticals, uh, researchers, uh, the government, agronomists, private company, everyone who benefits from agriculture, benefits from uh, Project Anton. And then we don't have any direct competition uh, locally. We do have indirect competition. Uh, we have guys like precision drones who use uh, drones for, for mapping and uh, treatment spraying. We don't have anyone doing exactly the same thing that we're doing. We have aerobotics in South Africa who use uh, uh, drones too. And then we have some guys like Apollo Agriculture and Ultimate Finance in Botswana. These are just indirect competition. Okay, uh, this is the team. Uh, it, uh, it's me and my two funding partners. Uh, the two of us, the three of us, are well versed in all the technical aspects, and then we also have a, a business analyst and a project manager on board too, uh, looking at a projected revenue of about thirty thousand US dollars by June, but by July, uh, with about a uh, thirteen thousand US dollars uh, for the for the gross profit. Our market stands out from Botswana, the southern region, the sub-Saharan region for Botswana. We just keep having 40%, 32% in Sadek, and 35% in the Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, we fully developed the MVP. We tested the MVP internally, and we intend to go across borders by November 2021. The MVP is fully developed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dumo. Uh, I think we went over the five minutes. Uh, awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna set the alarm. So when you hear it ringing, we immediately stop because we don't have much time. Uh, can we have the next uh, presentation, the next presenter, and uh, names? Our project is called Mpusa Emergency Response Management System. Now, um, I'll start off by saying that um, what drives me to is that I, I once got robbed. Um, I was uh, I was living in phase two and then uh, they, they broke into my house and then um you know it was a hassle for me to get this to kind of help me you know they took hours just to come to my house so that they can assist me with the problem that I so uh, i went on to research to find out that a location is usually a problem when 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 you are talking with the emergency services and if the response uh time for them to meet you where i'm at so um with that we managed to come up with uh, to solve this problem that we are facing. This so solution is called Intusa Emergency Response Management System. Now with Intusa, Intusa it, it, it's a suite of applications that has uh, three uh, applications that you can see on the screen there. We have the app and then we have the respondents app as well as the, the, the system. So the, the, the app is meant for citizens that they can use when stress to call for emergencies. And the, the top, what's on the tablet there, it's, it's, a, it's a respondents app. The respondents can use that to track or, or, or to see where you are, who can assist you. Our system is SMS enabled with the help button. And then we have a CRM there. Uh, um, our traction, we've we been, uh, we, we been there since 2015. Um, so we managed to pilot our system at emergency assist and uh, they're now using it. And then we, we managed to also pilot at government EMS uh, 997. So they're using our system 
Um, we, we have had uh, project proposals from a, a, a Namibia as well as Botswana Police. Now, Botswana Police they are very much interested in our system. So they were, they were looking for the way we have, uh, we have done it so that it can help them in terms of to, 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 to cap down crime and then uh, also to see and then see the, all the people that call in. Okay, um, in terms of racing, what we're asking for, we're asking for um, 800,000 pula, which is around uh, uh, 80,000 US dollars. So in terms of to finish up uh, our production, because we have uh, demand, the demand is there, like emergency assist right now. We, we are finalizing our deal with them as well as the government DMS. And then uh, this COVID thing, it, it came, uh, uh, sorry to say this, but it came at the right time where we are pushing this idea. So the, the, health, the, health, the health system they are looking into how they can incorporate our system in terms of um, using it and, and finding people whenever they are distressed. Um, we have a strong team behind us. Um, uh, our, our team is made up of three people. So it's myself, who, who I'm the founder and the inventor of the system. And then I have two more uh, qualified uh, developers that, are, that have been helping me develop this, this product. Um, in, when I, in terms of wrapping up, um, you know, the, the system has been working properly. It has, it has proven on the market that, uh, you know, as you can see that the emergency assist now uh, wants to use it, as well as um, government DMS and the police. So it will be easy for, 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 for them to triangulate and see the distressed people that are calling in. Uh, thank you. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much, Mbako, uh, of the speech now. Uh, we are going to get the third presentation, and then from there we'll have a Q&A session. And uh, after the, the Q&A session, then we'll go into the second batch of presentations. Uh, after that, we'll have a Q&A session, and then we'll go into the last batch of presentations. And then we will go into a, a, we'll go into a networking session where we can get to interact more with the entrepreneurs and get to learn more about their businesses. So don't worry much about not getting questions at this stage. There'll be a Q&A session after this presentation. And then at the end of the presentations, before uh, Mr. Celilo wraps up with his closing remarks, we will have a networking session. Uh, at this stage, I would like to request a sign coach to get on stage and make that presentation. Sign coach, you have three to five minutes to do your presentation. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Tego. Hi, everyone. My name is Lucia Mabare. I'm a founder of Sign Coach. And um, why Sign Coach? Well, Sign Coach um, came when I made a research and found out that there is a real communication barrier between the deaf society and the hearing. And actually, there are more than 20,000 deaf people here in Botswana. And uh, out of this 20,000, half of them are children. And these children, they do not have access to formal education. Only 5% have access to formal education, meaning 95% of this deaf children do not have access to formal education. Now, with that, where do we get in as sign coach? Um, I would love to play this video for you so that you see how sign coach works, and then we'll take it from there. The sign coach application which is meant to bridge the communication barrier between the deaf and the hearing. How does it work? By the click of a button, this app allows you to learn Botswana Sign Language at basic, intermediate and advanced levels and will promote the use of sign language to the general public as well. Commercialization of sign coach application will also facilitate people with hearing difficulties to learn about HIV AIDS, STDs and other diseases. As we can see, Sign Coach is an assistive technology that aims to bridge communication barrier between the deaf society and the hearing by teaching Botswana Sign Language. The Sign Coach application, which is meant um, And now, 
after breaking this communication barrier, what as an coach, we are looking forward to empowering the deaf society, empowering them to be part of the communication cycle and uh, creating having businesses, you know, opening up their own businesses and their own companies so that uh, they can employ others without any fear of communication being a barrier, especially that we are facing this unemployment challenge now. Um, the deaf people are, are people who are also able to run their own businesses and employ others. Um, um, but communication barrier is the main challenge right now. And also we are looking at, um, the deaf society having access to good quality education because the truth is right now the deaf uh, society have no access to good quality education due to the communication being a barrier and also we are looking at them having employment opportunities and being employed in large numbers and that can happen when they have access to good quality quality education and where there is no um, communication barrier we also looking forward at, at seeing them having access to you know different services communicating with service providers uh, on their needs but our main focus actually is them having access to good quality education we are looking at um, the education sector now with that we do have uh, our target market or say let me introduce you to our market we uh, have individuals or the public anyone can use sign coach to learn sign language and help uh, communi break communication barrier the deaf and the hearing and we are looking at the government we have like 28 ministries in Botswana so each and every ministry needs this application so that they can be able to communicate with the deaf society and helping them access their services and mainly like i've mentioned we are looking at the education sector the changing the education system and and, and uh, bringing inclusion in the education system so we have like uh, 812 private and public schools right here in botswana we are also looking at our postal services we have 127 post office countrywide and the deaf society are everywhere and why don't we take five minutes okay and then we can also switch the people on the stage as well. So I'm going to start the presentation and we'll have now um, a few minutes for to continue networking and we'll continue with batch number two. Okay, I see there's some technical issues here.